The devastating earthquake in Turkey and Syria. A look at the aftermath and humanitarian response. We are living in the time of the end. The fast fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. The days in which we live are solemn and important. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, the alarms of war are portentous. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. The condition of things in the world shows that troublous times are right upon us. The daily papers are full of indications of a terrible conflict in the near future. Bold robberies are of frequent occurrence. Strikes are common. Thefts and murders are committed on every hand. Men possessed of demons are taking the lives of men, women, and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice, and every species of evil prevails. Something decisive about to take place. The present is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element, and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place, that the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. Angels are now restraining the winds of strife, that they may not blow until the world shall be warned of its coming doom. But a storm is gathering, ready to burst upon the earth. And when God shall bid his angels lose the winds, there will be such a scene of strife as no pen can picture. The time is at hand when there will be sorrow in the world that no human balm can heal. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn. Disasters by sea and by and follow one another in quick succession. How frequently we hear of earthquakes and tornadoes, of destruction by fire and flood, with great loss of life and property. Apparently these calamities are capricious outbreaks of disorganized, unregulated forces of nature, wholly beyond the control of man. But in them all, God's purpose may be read. They are among the agencies by which he seeks to arouse men and women to a sense of their danger. A catastrophic disaster strikes Turkey and Syria. On Monday, the 6th of February 2023, a powerful earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 hit Turkey and Syria. The earthquake caused widespread damage to homes, infrastructure, and public buildings in both countries, and has led to significant loss of life, injury, and brought sorrow and incalculable damages. The humanitarian response. The earthquake has triggered a large-scale humanitarian response, with organizations such as the Red Crescent and Turkish Red Crescent providing emergency aid to those affected. Many countries around the world have also brought in their support. The response has been complicated by the ongoing conflict in the region, which has made it difficult to access some of the affected areas. Challenges in providing relief. The earthquake has highlighted the challenges in providing relief in a conflict zone, where infrastructure and essential services are already stretched thin. The response efforts have been hampered by security concerns and logistical challenges, such as limited access to some of the affected areas. Coping with loss and trauma. The earthquake has had a profound impact on the people of the affected areas, many of whom have lost loved ones or been injured. The trauma of the disaster has also left many struggling to cope, particularly as they continue to deal with the ongoing conflict in the region. The need for continued support. As the humanitarian response continues, there is a critical need for ongoing support for those affected by the earthquake. This includes providing shelter, food, water, and medical assistance to those in need, as well as supporting longer-term recovery efforts to help communities rebuild and recover from the devastation of the earthquake. As I hear of the terrible calamities that from week to week are taking place, I ask myself, what do these things mean? The most awful disasters are following one another in quick succession. 
how frequently we hear of earthquakes and tornadoes, of destruction by fire and flood, with great loss of life and property. Apparently, these calamities are capricious outbreaks of seemingly disorganized and regulated forces, but in them God's purpose may be read. They are one of the means by which he seeks to arouse men and women to a sense of their danger. The coming of Christ is nearer than when we first believed. The great controversy is nearing its end. The judgments of God are in the land. They speak in solemn warning, saying, Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. We are living in the closing scenes of this earth's history. Prophecy is fast fulfilling. The hours of probation are fast passing. We have no time, not a moment to lose. Let us not be found sleeping on guard. Let no one say in his heart or by his works, My Lord delayeth his coming. Let the message of Christ's soon return sound forth in earnest words of warning. Let us persuade men and women every way to repent and flee from the wrath to come. Let us arouse them to immediate preparation, for we little know what is before us. Let ministers and lay members go forth into the ripening fields to tell the unconcerned and indifferent to seek the Lord while he may be found. He Lord is soon to come, and we must be prepared to meet him in peace. Let us be determined to do all in our power to impart light to those around us. We are not to be sad, but cheerful, and we are to keep the Lord Jesus ever before us. He is soon coming, and we must be ready and waiting for his appearing. Oh, how glorious it will be to see him and be welcomed as his redeemed ones. Long have we waited, but our hope is not to grow dim. If we can but see the king in his beauty, we shall be forever blessed. I feel as if I must cry aloud. Homeward bound. We are nearing the time when Christ will come in power and great glory to take his ransomed ones to their eternal home. And it shall be said in that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Isaiah 25 verse 9 We are living in an unprecedented era, filled with fast-fulfilling signs of the times, all pointing towards the imminent return of Christ. These are solemn and important days. The Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth, and plagues and judgments are already falling upon those who despise the grace of God. The recent calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society, and the alarms of war are all portentous and indicate the approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating, strengthening themselves for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. Troublous times are right upon us, as indicated by the daily papers filled with indications of a terrible conflict in the near future. Our world is plagued with evil, as bold robberies, frequent strikes, thefts, and murders committed on every hand. Men possessed by demons are taking the lives of innocent men, women, and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice, and every species of evil prevails. As we hear of the terrible calamities happening every week, we ask ourselves, what do these things mean? The most awful disasters are following one another in quick succession, from earthquakes and tornadoes to destruction by fire and flood, resulting in great loss of life and property. However, in these disasters, we can read God's purpose. They are one of the means by which he seeks to arouse men and women to a sense of their danger. The coming of Christ is nearer than when we first believed, and the great controversy is nearing its end. The judgments of God are in the land, and they speak in solemn warning, saying, Be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. We are living in the closing scenes of this earth's history, and prophecy is fast fulfilling. The hours of probation are fast passing, and we have no time not a moment to lose. Let us not be found sleeping on guard, and let no one say in his heart or by his works, My Lord delayeth his coming. Let us persuade men and women every way to repent and flee from the wrath to come. Let us arouse them to immediate preparation, for we little know what is before us. 
ministers and lay members should go forth into the ripening fields to tell the unconcerned and indifferent to seek the Lord while he may be found. The Lord is soon to come, and we must be prepared to meet him in peace. We should be determined to do all in our power to impart light to those around us. Let us be cheerful and keep the Lord Jesus ever before us. He is soon coming, and we must be ready and waiting for his appearing. Oh, how glorious it will be to see him and be welcomed as his redeemed ones. Long have we waited, but our hope is not to grow dim. If we can but see the King in his beauty, we shall be forever blessed. The time is near when Christ will come in power and great glory to take his ransomed ones to their eternal home. Let us declare with conviction, homeward bound, and prepare ourselves accordingly. My dear brothers and sisters, we have all witnessed the devastating earthquake that struck Turkey and Syria recently. The scenes of destruction and loss of life are heartbreaking, and our hearts go out to those who have been affected by this tragedy. However, this earthquake serves as a stark reminder of the fragility of our lives and the world around us. As we reflect on the earthquake and its aftermath, we are reminded that we are not invincible, and our time on this earth is short. It is only a matter of time before we face the same fate as those who have lost their lives in the earthquake. This should prompt us to examine our lives and ask ourselves if we are living in accordance with God's will. In times like these, we should turn to the words of the Bible for guidance and comfort. The book of Isaiah reminds us that God is in control, and he will guide us through even the darkest of times. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. But it is not enough to simply seek comfort in these words. We must also take action. We must repent and surrender our lives to Jesus, for he is the only one who can truly bring us peace and salvation. He has promised to never leave us or forsake us, and to guide us through the storms of life. If you have not already done so, I implore you to turn to Jesus today. Repent of your sins, and ask him to come into your heart and guide your life. Only through him can we find true peace and purpose, even in the midst of the most difficult of circumstances. Let us also remember to pray for those who have been affected by the earthquake. Pray for their healing and restoration, and for the strength to rebuild their lives. Let us also be ready to help and support them in any way we can, for that is what it means to be the hands and feet of Jesus. In conclusion, let us take this earthquake as a wake-up call to examine our lives and turn to Jesus. Let us pray for those who have been affected, and let us be ready to serve them in love. May God bless you all. Around 4 a.m. on Monday, one of the largest earthquakes to hit the area in a century jolted locals out of their beds and sent tremors as far as Lebanon and Israel.